Welcome to One Step Past. I'm Bucky Wild, and this is Way Past Strange, the Hag of the Dribble. What is the Hag of the Dribble? For centuries, a lot of people in the hills of Wales claim to have seen her. Many people who haven't seen the Hag still believe her to exist. In my opinion, she's an unusual case among supernatural creatures. The only things we know about her is her appearance and what she does. Her exact origins and why she does what she does is unclear. The Hag of the Dribbles myth is very specific with only one major variation. You can't help but think that she is real. In the Welsh language, she is known as Gurak Ur Hreben. It translates to Hag of the Mist or Hag of the Dribble. There have been comparisons made to Ireland's Banshee legend, and it's quite possible that the two are related. It is believed that the Hag lives in fog-shrouded places near bodies of water, like streams. Curiously, the word Gurak can mean witch, as well as hag. She appears as a hideous old woman with black, leathery, bat-like wings. Her exact features may differ from one account to another, but she's always ugly. Could there be more than one hag of the dribble, or can she change her appearance? What we know for sure is that when someone of pure Welsh blood is about to die, she gathers stones in her apron and drops, or dribbles, them as she flies over their home. This always happens at dusk or sometime in the night. While she is doing this, she will wail and shriek in either a male or female voice, saying things like, My husband, my husband, or my wife, my wife, or my child, my child, whatever fits the occasion while also calling out that person's name. In addition, she makes the weird call of, Any. No one seems to know what that means. All the while, her wings will be flapping against the window panes of the house. She's a harbinger of death, but what exactly is she? The Hag of the Dribble could be a spirit or demon. Perhaps she's a witch. One part of the Hag's myth that seems to have cooled off over the last two centuries is her being a vampire. We'll explore that speculation a little later. Her potential powers and abilities are unknown. We know the hag can fly. We also know that she can tell who was full-blooded Welsh. The hag can also predict death. Is she psychic? What else can she do? Super strength is a given. After all, she's picking up heavy stones in her apron and flying up into the air with them. It has also been said that she can turn invisible. This would add up, given her sudden appearances and disappearances. One of the more fantastic things about her legend that is surprisingly played down is an ability to pass through solid objects like walls, and, as mentioned, the ability to suck blood. The whole vampire angle to the hag's myth gets messy and confusing. This is the one big variation to an otherwise straightforward legend. If the Hag of the Dribble was a vampire, it would contradict her function of simply warning people of impending doom. It wouldn't make sense. However, early accounts of the creature depict her as being a particularly nasty vampire using any given opportunity to satisfy her bloodlust on humans while also taunting Welsh families with tragedy. Sometimes meeting the hag in person could mean certain death, and sometimes not. In the stories where she doesn't kill you outright, the hag will turn herself invisible and follow you until you come to a crossroads or a stream. Then she will do the familiar shrieking that she is known to do when flying over people's homes, warning that person of the death of a loved one. If the scream is inarticulate, it means that you are going to die soon of some ailment. There is one part of her legend, largely dismissed nowadays, of her having a big black dog. To us, 
the name looks like Gwilgi. But in the Welsh language, it's actually pronounced Whiskey. It is referred to as the Dog of Darkness. The Black Dog, however, is its own legend throughout Britain and is more often separate from the Hag of the Dribble. Seeing these two together, however, was a big sign of evil things to come. The type of dog varies. It could be a hound, a mastiff, or even a black wolf. Although sightings of the black dog are still reported to this day, the connection to it and the hag of the dribble has faded. Yet another version of the vampire hag states that she likes to kill slowly and preys upon the weak and helpless. This includes small children, the elderly, and the bedridden. She takes only a small, survivable amount of blood from her victims, simply leaving the persons weaker. Then she comes back to the same individuals over and over until they waste away to nothing and die. This is not something exclusively attributed to the hag, however, and is based on what people already said about vampires in Central and Eastern Europe. As I've said, I feel that some people have piled things onto the Hag of the Dribbles legend over the years in an attempt to make her sound more exciting and dangerous. We know some things about the Hag of the Dribbles' abilities, but what of her weaknesses? These are less certain. There aren't too many specific first-hand or even second-hand accounts out there of encounters with the creature. Much of what is known about the Hag of the Dribble has been handed down orally. It's easy to understand that a lot of people wouldn't feel comfortable talking about such an experience. It's also easy to understand that if such a creature exists, not many people would live to tell the tale of a personal confrontation. In the mid-19th century, a retired Christian minister named Reverend Elias Pugh was one such person to claim that he not only survived the hag, but forever banished it from his village of... And bear with me here. Lin E. Wulang Gach. Whether I got the pronunciation right, I don't know. To make a long story short, many people in this village were getting sick and dying. The terrifying hag creature was seen multiple times in a dilapidated graveyard. Reverend Pugh, who had a reputation for banishing ghosts and things, was called upon by the townsfolk to do something. Pew wasn't a violent man by nature, but he knew the only way to get rid of the Hag of the Dribble was by force. He made himself a big heavy stick and went into the cemetery. After a brutal fight, Pew found that the creature could be hurt by physical force. He also found that the mention of God repelled the creature. Pew was able to escape that night, but would return the next night to finish the job. He came back with another heavy stick this one with a cross carved into it. After another scary battle, he struck the hag with his new stick, and she ran away for keeps, never to be seen in that area again. Pew was a well-liked member of the community. Did he tell the truth? If this story is true, it's a valuable piece of information on how we can fight the creature. But this brings me to another point. Is the hag of the dribble really an evil creature? Or has she simply been misunderstood all these years? Take away all the vampire stuff from her legend. Let's say that she is just a messenger of death and not a bringer of death. Why would she even do such a thing? Is it possible that the Hag of the Dribble is simply giving a heads up about the death of a loved one to allow the family time to make their proper goodbyes? I would like to think that there is some reason why the Hag does what she does. So what do you think? Is the Hag of the Dribble friend or foe? What is she? Is she a menace? Or is it possible that she can coexist with the human race? Or do you believe in her at all? Even if you do think this is all made up, there's one thing you've got to admit. It's way past strange. Thank you for watching. If you like what you've seen, Hit like and subscribe. I also appreciate comments. What other weird stuff from the past would you like me to talk about? Stay tuned for more far out fantastic videos.